Assalamualaikum Sayyidi. Waalaikum Assalam wa rahmatullah. Uh, Sayyidi, uh, in previous talks you had said, uh, ask forgiveness from Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What's the best adab for asking forgiveness? <coughs> best adab <coughs> is that when you're, you're praying and you go into sujood and or you're meditating, you're connecting, you have to have wudu, you, you make your washing, everything that you do for your salah, at the end of your salah you can make uh, Sayyid al-Istighfar, it's on the app, Tawbat Abdin Zalimin, they say it's the king of istighfars. You can make those istighfars and visualize yourself at Raza Sharif in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and at his feet. That when you're in sujood asking that I'm at your feet, I'm, I'm nobody and I can't lift my head until I've asked you for your forgiveness, the forgiveness of Allah that I'm a, a, a zalim and I have oppressed myself. And all the words within that du'a, Sayyid al-Istighfar on the app under du'a. You have it, uh, Haj Shahid, open up the app on du'a, think, shukran. Yes, please. Auzu billahi min ash shaitanir rajeem, bismillahir rahmanir raheem. Salli ya rabbi wa sallim ala jameel anbiya'i wal mursaleen wa ali kulli rajma'in walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ala ashrafil alameen Sayyidina Muhammadin salawat. Different, different. Sayyidat istighfar. Sayyid al-Istighfar, Tawbat abdin zalimin li nafsi wa yamlik al-nafsi mawtan wa hayatan wa nashur. Min ash-shaytan al-rajeem, Bismillahi al-Rahman al-Rahim. Tawbatan abdin zalimin li nafsihi la yamliku li nafsihi mawtan wa la hayatan wa la nushura. Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa anta khalaktani wa ana abduka wa ana ala ahdika wa ba'dika ma istata'atu. A'udhu bika min sharri ma sana'atu wa abu laka bi ni'matika alayya. وَأَبُوءُ بِذَنْبِي فَاغْفِرْ لِي فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَغْفِرُ الظُّنُوبَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ يَا اللَّهِ The repentance of a slave who has oppressed himself, who neither has power over his death nor his life or his resurrection. Ya Allah that you are my Lord and there is no God but you and you have created me and I am your slave. I hold fast to your covenant and to your promise as much as I am able. I take refuge in you from the evil that I have done and I testify that your grace is upon me and I profess my sins to you. Forgive me for there is no one to forgive sins except you Ya Rabbi Ya Allah. And asking that Prophet to hear that du'a and that Prophet to take that du'a to Allah that's when Allah asked that when you're oppressors to yourself, go to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and ask for forgiveness. Jawka wa astaghfirullah means that that is the, the understanding that when we meditate and at the feet of Prophet make the du'a to Allah and say, Ya Rasul Kareem, please ask Allah for my forgiveness. InshaAllah. Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Uh, Sayyidi, how can one realize uh, if this is a hardship or a punishment from Allah in which we are facing? Hardship or punishment? Yeah, you can help me at nurmuhammad.com and if it's
InshaAllah, help me and NurMuhammad.com. Dear Sayyidi. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sayyidi, you have mentioned that if the jinn comes too close to us, then we get sick. Please enlighten us. Does it mean that that's our own mistake that we get illness? No, that's confusing many things. Yeah, that's something else. That these, these nefarious creatures that are not good and they're not meant to be near humans, they are coming onto the earth and as a result everybody's getting sick because they're everywhere. So they want to give humans something so that to inoculate them not to die from the presence of these creatures but so that the creatures can occupy their humanity. And the way of the heavens is, we don't need that, we need ta'weez. So we need the ta'weez, we need the awrads, the zikrs and all of the practices. Regardless of sickness because they're everywhere so everyone's going to get sick but they're not going to possess people unless they've entered in and they don't leave and then everything begins to collapse within that insan. So this is a protection against them occupying, not a protection from sickness. Sickness is, is everyday life, that's the life that we have, dis-ease, it's all because of them. Every sickness has a relationship to them. Now whether they occupy the person and try to kill them, that's what this is about on how to protect oneself with the tools that Allah has given. So ruqya and taweez then is a sunnah and is the way of Sayyidina Muhammad And the bad madhab people they're against it. Anything that they taught that was about forbidden, take it. And anything they said to do that would take you to paradise, throw it. And you see who they are now, you see their concerts in Riyadh, you see all that they're doing, that's who they are. So everything that Prophet brought for us as a protection, of course they don't want it. Because they work for these nefarious creatures. But these are what Allah has given to us when we wear the taweez, have the taweez on our car, have the taweez on our homes, they know that you are with the army of the heavens and it has a light and has a protection from Budala, Nujaba, Nuqaba, Awtad wal Akhyar, Malaika wa Jinn. And from these seven categories they are protecting and they are accompanying these different taweezes into the homes of the students, into their homes, cars, work, everywhere around them. And this is our, our protection. Everything else is in what they say and whatever they want and whatever they telling people to do, that's not a protection. They have a plan and Allah has a better plan. But it requires true Ahlul Sunnah belief, true belief from the reality of Prophet not contaminated with any of that madhab's understanding. And that's why as these teachings become more and more you see those people they run from that understanding. So this is an immense importance and in days of difficulty testing, punishment, it's not necessary. You know if you're being punished, no need for me to say that on camera. You know when you're being punished. If you don't know you're being punished then think a little bit harder. But everything else is testing. So every insan knows if he's done something and Allah's hammer is coming, you don't need to ask anyone, am I being punished? If you've done nothing then know that you're being tested and in every test the outcome is to be good and to, to be raised. If you feel that what you're doing is raising you and blessing you then alhamdulillah. 
That's why then keep a positive outcome on everything and people whom are doing extremely bad not asking for forgiveness and continuously abusing the rights of others and, and, and these difficult types of things, these are days of great azab, great punishments upon the earth. But alhamdulillah tariqah teachings continuously making istighfar. As soon as you do something wrong make istighfar, maghrib time make all your istighfars. Make your Salat al-Awabin, if you're following the tariqah, following the app, at Maghrib time is the beginning of the day we have Salat al-Awabin which is anywhere from six to eight rakahs and that's for forgiveness. They're asking, Ya Rabbi grant my day that's going to start with your immensity of your forgiveness. And then our Salat al-Najad at Fajr time is again for forgiveness. And then all the zikrs and istighfars that we've told people that, that make throughout the day 10,000, 20,000 istighfars. How are you doing all of this and thinking Allah going to be punishing you? So then those whom are doing those things then they know, okay they made a boo-boo, they made a mistake, they made a sin, they're continuously asking for forgiveness. Then the rest of our lives is testing. Testing comes and alhamdulillah we try to, to do our best in our testing and to, to accomplish what Allah wants us to accomplish inshaAllah. And with every difficulty will come ease inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. Sayyidi we would like to know about the frequency 528 megahertz and what it has to do with spirituality and should Muslims use that frequency to be at peace? You know, I'm not familiar with 528 megahertz but I am familiar with the people whom are promoting on, on different YouTubes these sounds and, and sound frequencies and, and play these vibrations and for lack of a, a better understanding is that they don't do zikr. So in a, in a, in a world void of the understanding of dhikrullah and Divinely praise that's achieved through the Arabic phonics. Means this is a… when, when they describe these are the languages of paradise, these are an ancient language and through these sounds, these verbs and these vowels they have frequencies that are of an angelic beyond anything of these dunya megahertz and, and, and understandings. So people whom are devoid of these understandings then they start to play this sound is this, this one does this, there's one sound very slow that only children hear, there's one that animals and creatures hear that disturb them. These are going to be used by many nefarious people for weaponing, weaponizing and hurting and harming people. The most powerful heavenly sounds then are based on dhikrullah and salawat because not only it's a sound but it's a reality of a sound that an angelic reality is going to be moving towards that servant. The prophetic reality is going to be moving towards that servant. So there's no sound that can uplift you the way that we're describing. But when you make a salawat and you make a praise and you do the dhikr of Allah and you do all these practices, there are many angelic lights and prophetic light that move towards the servant and uplift them, change their frequency into angelic frequencies which is above all of the dunya frequencies. So that's again something beyond their understanding. And that's why then the tariqah has their own system and we don't mix it with you know under other understandings and, and all these other things. Most of these noises when your heart is, is fine-tuned and there are videos on our YouTube that you can search on how to attune yourself. So this is, this is a system in which you lock on with the shaykh, you meditate on how to connect with the shaykh as a part of listening and listening and listening and listening the vibration of the shaykh's teaching is going out and calibrating you and begins to move through your soul and calibrate you to his frequency. 
and He's attuning you and locking you onto His frequency. As a result of meditating and connecting <clears throat> what happens? You're now on the frequency of the shaykh. So as he's receiving, he's doing his zikr, doing his teachings, his frequency is then dressing and attuning all those whom have attuned themselves to him. And he's attuned to his shaykh, to his shaykh, to his shaykh, to the madad and the tree. And each shaykh is like that, 124,000 of them on this earth. So that's a completely different system. When you attune to them and you do your zikrs, your awrad and your practices, then you learn that nothing you can do is achieved by yourself. You're not going to sit and do something 20 times and this going to open, you're going to sit and do this 50 times and that's going to open. But that I have to attune to them and as I attune to them it's like their rocket is a continuous rocket into the heavens. When I attune I'm going to be jumping into their rocket and shooting up like an elevator in an instant. But if I'm going to recite for myself and try to purify, you can't even pass the, the gravitational pull of this earth, right? So you say, I'm going to make a plane and I'm going to go fast on my plane and I'm going to leave the earth. They said, but a plane doesn't have the, the same engine as a rocket. You know the speed in which the rocket goes is so fast that the earth moving it's able to leave the gravitational pull of the earth and then enter into an orbit because the engine on the rocket is so powerful that it goes outside of the earth's gravitational pull. So imagine then the gravity of dunya that grabbing people, keeping them down, the devil's within the person already. We say, not on the outside, the devil inside, they haven't been purified. What zikr you can do that would make you to rise up to destroy your devil and to make you to rise into the heavens? Nothing. That's why the people who don't have shaykhs they don't get anywhere. That means the concept of the shaykh is that you do your practices, you do your muraqabah and you're jumping onto their rocket. And their system of rockets is that they're linked with their chain all the way up to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So that's something completely different. It's like jumping onto a rocket and going up versus you take a little plane and keep flying around, you'll go in a circle. When you try to go up you'll actually go up, you end up in China or Indonesia, come back and go in the back, you'll go around the earth. But you will not have gone fast enough to break the gravity of the earth and leave. So that means that you spin your wheels but you don't really get anywhere. And the inner devil within people will pull them down with bad character and bad desire. So that's the, the reality of having shaykhs and that they're all connected like rockets into the heaven. <coughs> As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Sayyid Mawlana Shaykh Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh <laughs> Sayyidi, what is meant by activating your hands through wudu and how to achieve that reality? You have to get the, the timeless reality book. I think we're on a, on a series of, uh, of days that people have forgotten to get timeless reality. Everybody please get timeless reality and uh, read all the chapters and it's a reference book. Means everything on us is encoded. When Allah is having us make wudu, no problem, beginning stage people just copy. They keep making wudu, keep making wudu but eventually later on maybe the shaykhs will begin to teach that actually you have a code and everything is encoded. And as a result of, of rubbing you're activating these codes. And there's an article on nurmuhammad.com and there's thousands of articles on nurmuhammad.com that on any of these subjects you can just put in the search engine and they come up. And this subject on the power of the hands and the reality of the hands then goes into the different numbers on the hands and what the names and attributes of these and how you activate the power of the hand so that when you're making wudu you're activating a power. And as soon as you rub yourself, come and go for salah, 
you have now a shield of energy protecting you and you're praying to receive these powers and this dress and these lights upon the soul inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. In the past videos you mentioned of the activation of the two lights were mentioned. Is it possible to elaborate? Yeah, these are entire big, 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 big sections on uh, whole teachings. So it's not something that, you know, we can go over in two minutes. That, that if you get the book, The Rising Sun of the West, that's the whole secret of that book is activating these two lights, the reality of the sun and the moon. So everybody within insan has these two realities, these two secrets. So the two noons that are inside of insan, one is a nur and one is a nar. So I mean the nar is a fire which is a sun, the nur is a moon which is a reflection. So Allah has given to all of us a heart that can be active like a sun and it's like fire, it produces an energy and your head should be like a moon in which reflects energy. But everybody now is using their head like it's the sun. They use their head thinking that they're going to have power come out of their head. You watch these television shows and the, about the ancient aliens and all these things, everything's about their head and they would think about their head and their head would be very strong and then these creatures have these big huge heads. <laughs> yeah, so, but this way is based on the heart. So it means the, the sun is going to be in the heart of insan and their heart has to be lit like the sun. It has to catch an eternal flame. When that flame is lit within their heart it burns forever for all of eternity. They use this life to achieve that. If they don't achieve that in the life then Allah may give them an opportunity to achieve that in the grave but much more difficult. If they can achieve their heart being lit and becoming an eternal sun, then their shaykhs are teaching them how to shut off their head and that their head to become like a moon and which is… Uh, follows the heart and it reflects the reality of the heart and that's why their faces have light because there's an immense light within their heart and it reflects from the face. And then there are other people who you look they have no light on their face because their heart is just devoid of any light and it like sucks up the lights of people and their face is very dark and dark character and not dark by skin, dark by energy. It just pulls in the energy of people and you feel that that's a, a negative person and that's because of that reality that to activate the heart is essential, that's why the tariqahs. And as a result of an activated heart that they illuminate the head. Allah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, Could Sayyidi please talk what wave <coughs> symbolizes? What is what? Uh, if you can talk about what the wave symbolizes. Which wave? Particle and wave. <laughs> Which wave? The ocean wave? <laughs> you were speaking about the particle and the wave. Oh the wave, the particle and the wave, yeah. What does the wave symbolize? The particle is the mulk, is the world of form and the wave symbolizes light and the reality of light and how light diffuses and moves everywhere. So particle means it's something of a form nature like a glass, it just… it's there. But the wave reality means it's moving everywhere. So then that reality is much higher. So the wave is like the laser that's going out and diffusing into everything. So to live our life to achieve that reality that not just to be, you know, a piece of a block just sitting there but to achieve our light reality that emanating everywhere and uh, attaining knowledges and realities, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah uh, Forgive me for asking but how does one know that the palpitations are from a serious wrong decision that we are warned or anxiety out of fear of facing anything? 
I would imagine that to know yourself, that when you're in tune with your heart then you, your heart is a… is an organ that is very sensitive. So if it goes somewhere and, and it starts to beat and for no reason of your own it's maybe a warning for you. Somebody around you is very nervous by your presence or you're not supposed to be there as a warning sign. So it's an instrument in which you have to be acquainted with your own heart, that why is it palpitating, why are you feeling nervous and then calming yourself down and, and just sort of becoming more familiar with your character and your, your, your boundaries. It may palpitate when you're getting angry and try to warn you that you know, it's like a, it's like a little Geiger counter that you're talking too much then your heart may be palpitating telling you you're talking too much or maybe you're about to get angry that calm yourself down and the heart begins to fluctuate. So everything has a… it's a very subtle organ that when you know yourself and meditate you become more familiar with what your heart is trying to tell you. So then they're fine-tuned to their heart. And they're very late, late, latif, very subtle. Allah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. Could you recommend any practices that we could do to heal our hearts? To heal your hearts? Make salawats. Yeah. InshaAllah to, to make salawat on Prophet and you know that's what we talk, talked about many nights is the broken heart and the broken hearted people then they have to have a, a love for Sayyidina Muhammad and this life is about difficulties. How to endure these difficulties and the only way to repair it is to move into the presence of Prophet by making your salawats, making your istighfar, going into sujood and to, to connect with Allah connect with Prophet play salawats in the house. All of this heartbreak and difficulties draw us near to the Divinely Presence to teach us that this dunya is just filled with hardship and, and sadness and not to place too much importance on dunya and dunya people. Salaamu uh, Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa If we are too weak to make the necessary progress in these last days, what is our best course of action? Too weak to make the necessary progress. I don't know, I think we, we talked about that today, that this way is only based on love. So I, I don't understand how people can be too weak to make the progress, that you have to have love. In the minds of people everybody hears something I guess they want to hear, that there's lot to do, lots of things. And they simplified it very easy that this way is based on love, that to love Allah and love Sayyidina Muhammad that's it. But then if you want to be true to love then you sort of become true with love. They say, okay I love you Ya Rabbi, I love, I love Prophet and the shaykh is teaching, well if I really love then I would want to serve. So then I'm, I want to serve you Ya Rabbi, what can I do? What can I do to be of service? So do you really want to serve me? Yes. You want to be noble in your character? Say yes. Then serve Sayyidina Muhammad What What a greater nation that Allah loves is then go follow your messenger and your Prophet And then He guided us to the shaykhs who are of service to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad so our life is about living a life of service, that's what we talked about at the beginning. If you really want to serve then you pray, 
You can't say, oh then praying is a burden, praying is too difficult but you wanted to serve. There's nothing difficult in trying to improve oneself out of love. If you're not feeling well with your health, pray on a chair. If you're busy and too many people at work, sit on a chair and pray. Give any excuse you can, just complete what Allah asks from you. Don't not do it. So everything is doable, if there's a will there's a way. We said before, give charity, give charity, give charity, be generous, be, be of a nature to serve and if you don't have, everybody has a finger, they can click and share a link, share a link, share a link, share a link. That you share that link and other people will give, other people will serve, other people will come to the tariqah when they see the videos or the articles. So there's so many ways that Allah has opened for us. I don't believe that it's anything difficult other than the nafs sort of sitting on people's head and just saying, don't move, don't do anything. And in this life there, there doesn't seem to be too many, too much competition because this world is about to get immensely much more difficult, right? We didn't have these types of questions in the middle of the pandemic. Why? Because everybody had the fear of death that tomorrow they're not going to breathe, breathe. Nobody asked, oh this is, this is too much. It was, uh, what can I do? What should I read? Uh, what should I drink? What can I… faced with, with the… with for sure death, these actions seem very easy. But as soon as the boat lands, everybody feels like again, oh yeah, I don't know if I was going to do all of that. I don't know what I promised Allah, I don't know, I don't know about that. Seems like it's too hard. And that's why you understand that why difficulty then difficulty comes, then difficulty comes and then difficulty comes is to keep people motivated to work for their paradise. Otherwise they feel that, oh no, I, say, I don't know. So then these, these are the the luxuries of too much time. But when you're faced with imminent death and difficulties all around, hardship is everywhere, you see it. You see you turn on television and in the morning their lives are completely changed in these areas now. So then it's just a matter of time. So you just keep your love, keep your practices and you weather another storm that's coming. But if you slow everything down and then get hit by a storm and then you know start texting, what can I do now, what can I do now? Because one after another storms are coming, one after another storms are coming. So there's no ease, it's just a matter of surviving these difficulties to be with Sayyidina Mahdi inshaAllah. Salaamu alaykum Sayyidi. Walaykum As-salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, can you please explain alam malakut and alam barzakh? The world of what? The world of light and the world of the grave? What, what, what do you want to explain from that? <laughs> the world of light is what we're trying to achieve. There's a reality of barzakh that uh, what happens in a state of death but the reality of light is a superior teaching than to worry about the state of death because through the teachings of the reality of light you can achieve the state of death and that's a higher rank. So it means that to achieve from the world of malakut and the world of light that is their teaching that begin to teach you from barzakh that was the khalwa teaching, that was the jinn teaching, that was the energy teachings because that's all from barzakh. That's from the interdimensional life before paradise because the shaykhs they entered into that reality, they do through their seclusions that reality. So come back to teach people to reach to that. You have to reach to where you switch the contract which your soul governs your body. If you don't have mawt qabl al-mawt, if you don't reach death before death, your physical body has entrapped your power. <coughs> and your soul. If you follow these practices and meditations then you enter into a state of death in which your soul's power comes out. That's a barzakh reality, 
on life, in the, on this earth, their soul is operating their body. They hear with their soul, they hear with their… they see with their soul, they speak with their soul, they move with their soul, their soul is operating the, the associations. Because of that reality then there's a tremendous amount of qudra, light and, and blessings. So that's the whole teaching is to take everybody to that reality inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon <coughs> wa salaam ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen illa sharif al-nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alihi wa ashabi kiram wa la mashayikina fi tariqatan ashbandiyatan aliyah wa sayru wa sadatina wa siddiqina al-fatiha.